In today's video, we're going to be building a gaming PC in the Metallic Gear Neo G mid tire computer case powered by Pantex. There will be timestamps in the description below. If there's a certain part of the video you like to jump to, you're more than welcome to do so. Some other links down there that may interest you, and don't forget to do all that fun YouTube stuff on your way down to that description box. After building this case, is it going to actually change my mind about what I initially thought about this case when I did the unboxing and the spec review of it? Well, we'll find out. But let's flip you over here and we'll run down through the components that make up this system and why I'm chose the ports that I have. To start out with, we have the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X for the processor. The motherboard, we have the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Pro motherboard. For storage in the system, we have the Silicon Power 512 Gigabyte NVMe M.2 SSD. For the RAM, we are running G Skills Rip Jaws 5 Series 16 gigs. 2 8 gig sticks and 3600 megahertz speed. This is what makes this system a little bit unbalanced, but we do have the Gigabyte Radio and RX 5600 XT. Everybody knows the current conditions of GPUs, and I really don't have the money to go out and pay for scalper prices for one, so I'm just using what I have available here in the studio. Yes, this is an unbalanced build. Yes, the 5800X could handle a lot better GPU, but this is what I have, so this is what I'm using. And the power of the whole system, we have the EVGA 650 watt GQ 80 plus gold modular power supply or semi modular power supply. And of course, the case that's going to be housing everything for today's build is going to be the Metallic Gear Neo G mid tire ATX case. Like I mentioned while I was running down through the ports, this is an unbalanced build. Yes, I know the 5800X could handle a lot more powerful GPU, but why I'm building this system is I want to do some air testing or some testing on coolers that's a little bit higher range than what I have been doing. So I needed a processor that could produce a little bit more heat than what a 6 core 12 thread processor can do. That's why I'm putting this build together if I can test these higher end CPU coolers. Which that brings me to my next point. For today's build we're going to be putting in the Be Quiet Pure Loop 240 all-in-one water cooling system. This is in the 240 millimeter AIO that I have mounted in the top of the case. We're going back looking through the channel. I did do an unboxing on this cooler a while back, but I never did do an installation and temperature testing for this cooler. So I figured this would be a good opportunity to use the cooler, show you how to install the cooler in a different video, and do some temperature tests and see how it actually performs. So that will be coming up on the channel as well. But let's put together a little montage here, I guess is what you call them. A little time lapse, whatever you want to call it. And I'll show you me putting the system together.
All right. Now, since we got the build all done up and got it all put together, I think it looks pretty nice. It is a pretty nice looking case. But for the price point of this case, I really don't think it's worth the money. I don't like the front IO on it. You know, where your power button is, they put them RGB controllers on there. For some reason, I tried them controllers and they ain't controlling the RGBs. I don't know, maybe I got them hooked up wrong or maybe because I got them hooked up into the motherboard so they were riding them controllers. But between that front IO, the vents on top, which whenever I do the testing on the Be Quiet 240 all-in-one liquid cooler here on the channel, I'm going to really test the airflow of this case. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to see them videos when they drop. Between them fence, that front IO, and the cable management, which I showed you a little bit of, there ain't a whole lot of room behind the motherboard tray for cable management besides that one channel that runs down that left side. Even the little control box I use for my fans, I had to push over into that, that channel if I could even get the back panel on. In the initial video when I unboxed this and went through the specs of the case, which if you haven't seen it, I'll put a link to it up there for you to go check that one out. I think this case is better fitted for a $60 $70 case. And I, even after building it, I still think this stands true. I think the price on this case is a little bit high. You know, I have it, so I might as well use it, right? As far as the airflow testing goes, you know, I have to wait till I actually get some tests done on it, see how them top vents actually hold up or see if they actually do what they're supposed to do. Because that'll be coming up here on the channel. There will be links in the description below if you'd like to check one of these cases out or if you'd like to have a little bit more information on it, you're more than welcome to do so. There's some other links down there that may interest you. Don't forget to do all that fun YouTube stuff when you're way down to the description box. You all have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video or live stream.